Good day, this is John from Damn Best Racing Carburetors. We're adding a new video for the most current idle transfer slot adjustment in our metering box. I looked this morning to see what we had on our website and also on YouTube, and I realized I may have given some personal explanations via FaceTime or something else, but there was no current videos. So if you ever have a question, contacting me through the website, uh, the email there is info1 at dambest.com or on our Facebook channel page at dambest.com are usually the best ways. I don't respond to the YouTubes too frequently because they don't send me messages. Um, so here today, once again, I'm going to review now we've got the new V blocks, and this is what happens the one I have here in my hand has the power valve option. And as it was in the previous metering blocks, there's two accesses for fuel to the new idling system. And I'm going to say it that way, accesses to fuel. Because earlier, you know, you gotta remember we're we're going back and a 4150 Holley carburetor now is probably in excess of 70 years old. Probably pretty close to 75 years old. So some of the things that were done even 40, 50 years ago have been changed to make it more tunable, uh, more range for the carburetor. That means, in this case, idling from engines that have very, very poor idling vacuum to some engines that have a great deal of idling vacuum. So the idling adjustment system just needs more range. So the new V-Box is where the booster hull is in line with the main jet here. Let me just see if I can get that over there and you can see that in there wiggling around. Alright, that's to lower the resistance through the metering block. As you can see the emulsion holes are right here. We have a video on what's going on inside the metering block as well, which probably has some of this explanation too. Then on this side, as we have in the other explanation, at the bottom of the main well, there is an idle access hall. And used to be at the bottom of the main well or at the top over this channel here, they would put a jet. Well, now we just call it an, an access position because the fuel get access and it comes down to this position here, which happens to go all the way through the metering block to the other access position. And they are threaded because the only thing that happens with them is they get blocked off. So if we put a jet in this side, right here, that means we're denying access to the idle system from here. And that means that the other side would be open. This one would be open. So that we're getting access to the idling system from the bottom of the main well. Now why is this important? It doesn't change the idle um, fuel delivery because whether it gets the fuel from the bottom of the main well or from inside the float bowl, which is here, it's only the access to the idling fuel system. What changes from these two is if we access it from the float bowl, that means we're plugging the one at the bottom of the main well. The idle at the bottom of the main well is a hole, goes into the main well, adds one more air bleed to the system. Where this becomes important, which we found in the previous video, some very, very low air movement vacuum engines, when they open the butterfly to get enough air to go past the idling system in the meter, in the flow, um, base plate, they'll begin to draw fuel out of the booster. Once they do that, you know, the air signal changes from the idling up to the booster, 
That means the booster at this point is changing directions. From, there's the booster hole right here. So the booster is pulling on this hole, which now is trying to lift the column, which now turns that into an air bleed. So as you're trying to acquire idle fuel and you have this one open, the fuel will want to change direction. And, and for a moment, it's neither going through the base plate or out the booster. And the engine's with very low idle vacuum, idle signal struggle right there when you're going from the transition. You're going from a more closed butterfly to a slightly more open butterfly. Those engines will show up and have no fuel delivery at that moment. So that's what this is. If you block that off, but poof. All right, now when the booster draws more fuel, it'll only draw through the normal emulsion circuit. So that's why it was put there to close off. At that point, the idle fuel will be coming from inside the flow ball, undisturbed by anything that's going on with the booster. In some cars, I have one customer, there's other customers that do foot brake racing, which is a challenge for an engine through the transition of the throttle when your engine is at low engine speeds, low vacuum, low everything. Now, could idle a good vacuum? This particular one has a um, screw charger on I think is what it has on it. All right. When the butterfly is open dramatically, you don't want to have the lag between the idling system coming from the bottom of the main well and the booster signal. You want it just to respond to the booster signal. Because people can really open the throttle of the carburetor quickly, so you don't want the fuel to be changing directions in the main well during transition. So I made the choice to close off the bottom access point to the idle fuel, having it only draw from inside the float ball, which means this would be open. Many years ago, when I first came up with the design, the jet was still here. The reason why we only use the access point is, once again, our carbs go on you know, thousands of different style engines. And we found out that we needed to split the idle fuel, which is the outside one, and the transfer slot adjustment, which is the inside one. So by adding jets in the main housing so all the fuel delivery now has been moved let me get that thing to, out to the main housing it's no longer in the metering block only thing it's in the metering block is the access to the fuel which goes into these two channels all right so once it goes over to here there's Let's just use this other red one here and see if I can get that down through there. Can it be seen? Yep. All the way in the bottom there, see it? All right, goes all the way up to the top. I'll leave it in there for the moment. So that's where it goes up here. It'll catch the air bleed from the main housing through the gasket. That comes down this position here, feeds the transfer slot. I'll put two, one next to the other. Bring it in here a little closer. So you can see that the transfer slot adjustment is directly above this one, and the idle adjustment is directly above that one. So that adjusts the idle. I'm going to tip it a little further in. So. <clears throat> Yes, you have an idle jet, but you also have a, what they call curb idle, which is a needle and seat going through the side of the main block. So you, you can completely shut off any fuel going to the idle by just screwing in the curb idle. So it is a needle and seat adjustment for you know so you can access it from outside the car carburetor. You don't have to take it apart and change the jet in the main housing, which is another thing you could do. If this becomes uh, not fine enough, see the go in here and you can see the screw it there. Make it that little white so you can see it in there going in and out. And 
that needle accesses the outside hole to the inside hole. If it's all the way in, that means it's closed. That means there's zero fuel going through it. <clears throat> These have also been changed because so many engines require more idle fuel because they've gotten bigger, different types of fuel. You've got methanol, you got E85 that we've gone through, spent a year redesigning idle school screw, making a larger diameter, larger needle. So on the engines that are very low in sensitivity or use methanol or E85 that they can, there's just so many engines now that the demands on the idling circuit have really jumped up that this, this absolutely was a must that we increased and changed everything in the idling circuit. So the, the holes and jets that are in the main housing, that, that once again, they're jets, they have threads, they can be changed. Depending on the build, a lot of times these 4500s will start off like with 040. Once again, that's only a secondary adjustment. You still have the curb idle screw going in and out. But if you want to make it more fine or bigger or smaller, you can just make it smaller or bigger right here. Transfer slot is just for the transfer slot. A lot of times the baseline is like an 052 there. You can make that bigger or smaller. Some of the small butterfly um, engines will com will need that to be completely left out because of the idle and the small air going past the in the transition. So it's not uncommon for this to be any size whatsoever, including being completely left out. And that is to feed the transfer slot. Now, let me just set this out here. The other thing that had to happen in a lot of the 4,500 base plates, going back to the point where the idle fuel is signal at whether it be vacuum or airspeed is so 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 low i'm trying to find the right words here that we've gone and put a tube this isn't in this particular one so part of the uh, idle system now is a brass tube that extends to help enhance the low air signal so the air going past it will create a low pressure as well as the vacuum in the engine but if the engine's gotten to a point where it has less idle vacuum it needs something to assist the idle fuel so now we have drilled a hole through the base plate we put a brass tube in there that you know enhances the idle signal so we're doing everything we can to make sure that at no point with low idle vacuum is there an issue with acquiring fuel in some cases it may be hypersensitive at which time we can put a smaller jet in the main housing here going from an 040 to an 035 and we can turn in the idle screw the curb idle screw until we find a happy adjustment going in and out being that everything has changed we can't go back and do something that one and a half turns out is more than 50 years old now. It's the amount of idle fuel that the engine needs. If it needs less, it goes in. If it needs more, it goes out. So each engine has to be adjusted separately based on its demands and how much idle fuel, uh, idle vacuum it has or idle airspeed it has. So depending on the system in the engine, all of these things are open to adjustment. Increasing the um, booster signal by removing the access point and putting it on the inside the flow pole area. This is the access point to the idle fuel now. Or if we want to reduce the transient signal, in some cases we want to do that, then we would put the access point at the bottom of the main well. It looks like, you know, because of all the combinations that are going out there, the carburetor is getting bigger so they can make more power on the dyno. So the, the sensitivity to the transient throttle is getting less. So more of the carburetors are going out with the transient, the access point being plugged at the bottom of the main well and open in the flow pole. Now that 
can be changed. It's, you know, like I said, we put threads on it so people can unscrew one, screw it in the other, and two needs to optimize their own combination. So, uh, if there's any questions, once again, reach out to me at info1 at dambest.com. It's always nice that if you can add pictures or go on to our Facebook page, which at this point there truly is there's more than 15 years worth of explanations and uh, pictures and daily work going on that you can reach to us and other people in our forum there and can be very helpful. So I hope this is uh, another level of explanation on our current idle adjustments. Thank you.